My name is Joe Dalton, entrepreneur and business coach. Welcome to Breakthrough Brands. Each week, we bring you an inspirational story and an insight to the minds of some of the top business leaders, authors, and mentors from around the globe. Whatever is needed to make you shine in life and business, you'll find it here. On this week's show, we have Marianne Williamson. Marianne is an internationally acclaimed author and lecturer. For the last 35 years, she has been one of America's most well-known public voices, having been a popular guest on television programs such as Oprah, Larry King Live, Good Morning America and Bill Maher. Seven of her 12 published books have been New York Times bestsellers, and four of these were number one. The mega bestseller, A Return to Love, is considered a must-read of the new spirituality. Do you want to discover how to be unique in your marketplace, transform your business by attracting and inspiring your ideal client, or have myself, Joe Dalton, to speak at your next event? Would you like to attend one of my workshops or be coached by myself? If any of the above are of interest, please contact me, joe at jdc.ie. Marianne, welcome to Breakthrough Brands. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm delighted. I believe you've been traveling America and to Europe very soon. Right. I will be in Dublin and in Basel, Switzerland and in Valencia, Spain. Uh, I, I lecture, you know, my daughter lives in London, so I come over to Europe fairly, recent, uh, fairly frequently. Excellent. Was it back in 1978? <laughs> would I be correct in saying that it was you picked up the Course of Miracles? I think probably 77, somewhere around there, probably. Yeah, yeah and, probably. Or somewhere 75, 77, somewhere in there. For someone who would be interested in picking up the book now <laughs> and probably finding it very difficult to get their head around it, what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, it's not a book you read quickly. No. It's not a book that you say, I'm going to read a couple chapters before I go to bed tonight. Um, secondly, I think that when you're really ready to read it, it's not as difficult as you might think. Um, it's simply a book to read very slowly. And when it's really for you and you really are ready for it, you drink in those words. There's a part in The Course in Miracles where it says these words are medicine. Now, for those who might be interested, <clears throat> uh, my book, A Return to Love, is like the cliff notes, what we call over here the cliff notes of A Course in Miracles, a popularized, um, simplified version of the basic principles. But, you know, that's just a little uh, intro or help guide with the principles. Um, and, and some people find that a helpful entrance uh, into the study of the course. I found that when I tried to pick up the book myself, I think I got halfway through it and I had to put it down. I, I, I couldn't get in and I even had the audio as well. I've gone and I've read other stuff like tapped into Abraham Hicks and I've tapped into again with, with Deccan Coyle as well and a lot of others. But it's something that it was your book, I think, that I picked up, which was the Law of Divine Compensation. That was really sort of set me on the path again to having a bash at the Course of Miracles. Yeah, because the Abraham Hicks material, while quite uh, quite fine, is, is not A Course in Miracles. So, no, it's not. Um, so, yes, that makes sense. And thank you. I'm honoured that my book was helpful to you. How do people deal with ego on a daily basis? How do people <coughs> deal with manifestation on a daily basis? And there's a lot of questions. Like, I, I could stay, I could probably talk to you for hours and hours uh, on some of the stuff that we have. But... How do you deal on a daily basis spiritually? Well, when you say how do we deal with ego on a daily basis, ego is something we deal with on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And from the perspective of A Course in Miracles, we make a decision in every instance. Sometimes we make the decision consciously, and sometimes we make the decision unconsciously. But one way or the other, we choose, and that is whether to have an open heart or closed heart, whether to stand in front of the person we're with in blessing or in blame, whether to rise to the occasion and be the best that we can be, 
or to acquiesce to our own neurotic patterns and so forth. Every moment we choose which aspect of selfhood we choose to put forth, either our ultimate reality, which is our love and our compassion, yeah. or the fallen state of fear and blame and judgment and attack. Now, the difficulty is that the world in which we live has trained us to think the fear-based thoughts. And enlightenment is a journey of dismantling that thought structure and substituting another. Now, how do we do it? Well, it's, you know, just like you go to the gym to rebuild your muscular structure, to strengthen your muscles, spiritual practice, which in The Course in Miracles is not only reading the book, but doing the 365 days of lessons, meditation exercises, we train the attitudinal muscles. We train the attitudinal muscles <clears throat> so that we become people who are far more likely to choose love, to choose rising to the occasion, to choose non-judgment, to choose generosity. Now, we're not enlightened masters, and certainly I'm not, and certainly no one that I know too well personally is, but we it, it's, it's a process, it's a journey, and you know how you're doing by whether or not you feel at peace. And then also I think what The Course in Miracles gives us is tools for what to do when we know we've gotten off track. I'll give you an example of something that happened to me very recently. Please do. Something Please happened do. and I got angry. Well, I'm not enli so enlightened that I don't get angry necessarily, but I'm enlightened enough that when I got angry, I knew I was off. I wasn't justifying it to myself. I knew that this was an insane state. And then I was about to send a text well, once again, <clears throat> I'm not so enlightened that I didn't have the impulse to send the angry text, but I'm far enough on the path to know that that text would be a very bad idea. It's continuing the journey of fear and suffering. And I picked up the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles talks about how these ideas are tools in your problem-solving repertoire. And I picked up the Course and I opened it and my lesson that I opened to was love created me like itself. And it talked about love created me kind, love created me generous, love created me gentle, etc. So the Course is saying the angry me is not the real me. And so with the, you think it is because it's your appetite of the moment. But your fear-based, angry self, non-loving self, might be your authentic feeling at the moment, but it is not your authentic self. Yeah. And so when I, when I read that, it calmed me down. I was able to close my eyes, realign my consciousness, and choose again. And I didn't send that text. It would have been so stupid. And I proceeded from there on a different plane because God works a kind of alchemy inside us. So once again, you're not necessarily at a point yet where you wouldn't have that feeling, but you become adept at not having so little impulse control that you can't choose another way of thinking and acting. I think that's the journey that we're on. Like I, I say to people, I take creation as a computer and say God is the processor and we are the programs and the apps and with all the glitches and everything as well. And with saying that we are all one, with each other and then with everything that is around us, the trees, the plants, Gaia, the earth. Would that say then if we are created as God, we have our own glitches and faults, that God is imperfect as well? No, I do not see God as imperfect at all. I think God is that which is all perfect. Uh, in terms of your um, computer analogy, I think of, of an undeletable file. <clears throat> and we, we tend to think that our job every day is to bring down a blank document and figure out what we want to write. But to say, may God's will be done, God is love and will is thought. And if you ask that God's will be done, you are asking that a file that is an undeletable file, yeah. which is the truth of who you are, be brought to the screen. So we have within us a perfect self. The issue is getting to the point where we choose it. And I think that where we choose it consistently. And by the way, we all choose it at times. You know, I mean, we're all loving at times. 
we're loving with the people with whom we feel safe to be loving. We, we're loving in situations where we feel that we can be loving and get our needs met. But we all have those places, uh, usually based on childhood experiences, where we get triggered and where, for whatever reason, we don't, in a certain moment, feel safe uh, to express our love and get our needs met. Now, the irony and the tragedy often of that is that what we're thinking at the moment in that instant of trigger is that only by defending and only by withholding my love and only by blocking my heart will I be safe. But the truth of the matter is our only invulnerability lies in our vulnerability and blocking our heart never is the safe way to go because to block your heart is to deflect the miracle. Miracles work uh, naturally, uh, occur naturally as expressions of love. Now, it's also true, though, that when I say we choose love, that doesn't mean that the form of love is always to say yes. It doesn't necessarily mean, yes, I will go into the park with you at night, you know, or anything like yeah, that. To, to... Love can also say no. But even there we can be assured that when we align with love, we're aligning with wisdom as such that we can say yes when yes is appropriate and no when, when no is appropriate as well. I think the biggest thing for myself um, would be like I am spiritual, I do believe, and I every day have a mantra and I try to meditate. It's very hard to meditate when you have two small children running around the minute you get out of bed. But the question is doubt, is having that moment of doubt, like believing that there is a God, believing that, you know, things happen, manifestation, we are our own creation, everything flows. But how do people are, remove that doubt that they have that niggles away in the back of the mind that, that stops them being great? Well, you ultimately learn that there are objective, discernible laws of the inner life, just like there are objective, discernible laws of the external life. I don't doubt gravity. Yeah. Gravity just is. So you get to the point with something like the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect is like gravity. Your opinion has nothing to do with it. Your, your opinion, whether you believe in gra gravity or not, is so not the issue. The issue is if you drop that book in your hands, it will hit the floor. So spiritual principle is law. It, it, it's, just the way, it's just the way the universe operates. Whether you think cause and effect uh, is operative or not, it's operative. So that means that if you take the loving path, you will get a loving effect. If you choose a non-loving cause, you will get a non-loving effect. Your opinion about it kind of doesn't really matter. All that matters is our experience. Now, in terms of faith itself, faith is an aspect of consciousness. Everybody has faith. Yeah. The issue is what do you have faith in? So you either have faith in the power of your disaster, that's where most of us live, it with a misplaced faith. A lot of people, when you describe someone who doubts God, the problem is not that they doubt the power of love, it's that they have so much faith in the power of cancer, so much faith in the power of <clears throat> what's going on politically, so much faith in the power of the things that can go wrong. It's simply a matter of training our attitudinal musculature to affirm more that which can go right and which does go right when the mind is aligned with that than the way we so often affirm with the ain't it awful mentality of the ego mind. I've been trying to practice my own spirituality over the last 10 years, being born in Irish Catholic and then it sort of was a, the Bible belt being bashed into you and then sort of rebellion against all that in my 30s then in my 40s sort of getting more spiritual but I still find it very difficult on a daily basis to be removing those negative thoughts do you think they're ingrained into us from our parents to our DNA and our great grandparents because of what they were told you can't expect this or you know money doesn't grow in trees or are all those sayings that parents pass on to their children well the rest of the world is very aware of what has happened in Ireland in terms of your relationship with the Catholic Church. So it is very understandable that the Irish are going through a lot of processing and a lot of transition. Yeah. Um, I have a much younger, I live in a much younger country than you do. So you literally have centuries of programming. Um, and I, I, I certainly 
uh, certainly understand how dismantling that has got to be very multi-layered. I think ultimately what many people have experienced <clears throat> is that when they turn away and legitimately and justifiably and for good reason from certain religious dogma and doctrine, such as so many in Ireland are doing, for understandable reasons when it comes to the Catholic yeah. Church, I think sometimes people ultimately find they threw away the baby with the bathwater mm -hmm. and that they had not intended to throw God out. They just intended to throw out the horrifying container um, that had been laid over the genuine religious impulse. So just as there was a deep religiosity of Ireland in the past, I would assume that over the next 50 years, you would, would be a, a very fertile ground uh, for a flowering uh, uh, to be a very fertile plot of land uh, when it comes to the flowering of the genuine spiritual impulse, which I believe will be the major mark of the 21st century. I would agree with you because speaking to people, people will tell you on their own that they're spiritual but they don't want anyone to know because they still attach it to yeah. that dogma religion. But yeah, there's a I lot of people that. out there are starting to believe in energy and are believing that there is yeah. something greater than what they can comprehend. And it's nice for that. And that's where... Well, not only that, if you look historically, and I don't need to tell you this, before the Catholics, I mean, when you look at the, the Celtic history of Celtic spirituality, uh, you not only have a long tradition of Catholicism in, um, in Ireland, you even have an even longer tradition yeah. of earth-based spirituality, etc. Go back to the so Druids. there's a lot that early, the early Christian church sought to bury that's actually buried in your country that's and right. in your part of the world. So as that cap and that lid comes off, there are so many centuries of, of silenced and buried uh, spiritual impulse that will just be bursting into the Irish psyche, and I'm sure already is. Um, and that will be a great blessing, not only in your country, uh, but, you know, the, the world knows, certainly Western civilization knows that whenever the Irish have a good idea, the world becomes a better place. We're a rock on the side of Europe. We have a good voice around the world, as there's 70 million Irish around the world and 35 million of them are in America. Well, you know, it, it's a fascinating thing. It, it's like the different, just like people have different talents, different national characters have different talents. It's almost like I look at the Italians. Italians see colors that I swear the rest of us don't see. The Irish have a way with words. Uh, yes. I mean, you just look at the history of, you know, literature. So uh, it's fascinating, isn't it? What what uh, what emerges from what cultures? It's extraordinary, actually. We're just going to take a short break. Do you want to discover how to be unique in your marketplace, transform your business by attracting and inspiring your ideal client, or have myself, Joe Dalton, to speak at your next event? Would you like to attend one of my workshops or be coached by myself? If any of the above are of interest, please contact me, joe at jdc.ie. Tell me, what do you do on a daily basis to you know, keep your spirituality going? A Course in Miracles, and I am also do Transcendental Meditation. And at this point in my life, uh, you know, I, the issue is I, I try to practice what I preach. You know, it's not just to meditate, or it's not just to do the Course, it's also to hold myself accountable okay. uh, as best well. I can for practicing uh, the principles that I, I have by now pretty much well learned. Well, then can I ask you the next question? What's your favorite prayer and why? There's a, there's a prayer in the Course in Miracles where it says every morning we're to wake up and say, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? And that is so powerful because it so aligns you with purpose. That's lovely, actually. You exploded worldwide after being on the Oprah show. How did you deal with that? Did the Course of Miracles help you through that? Because sometimes, you know, we can let ego and run away when suddenly everybody knows who we are and what we're about. How did you ground yourself? I 
first of all, I'm not sure I did totally ground myself. Secondly, and this is probably a blessing. I, I have never been able to take in fully an emotional and psychological realization of success at what I do. And that probably is a blessing. Definitely. I think I am much more psychologically and emotionally attuned to responding to perceived failure than to perceived success. So maybe that's for the best. I look back at it and I don't think I totally recognized what was happening. Uh, yeah. yeah. But there were other ways that I think I got full of myself, but not in the ways that you would think. So, you know, I would give myself a B minus. <laughs> Is the true path then, we're all just doing our day to day, we're all living our lives, we have our ups and downs, we have our fears, we have our doubts, we have our love, we have our happiness and everyone, you know, that you listen to or tune into, they're saying all you need to do is just be happy and if you're happy, everything else changes in your life. Is that how simple it is? No, it's not as that simple as that and what person living their life on a daily basis thinks that. Yeah. Uh, a Course in Miracles. Uh, does say that happiness is a decision that we make and that happiness is not circumstance dependent. And it does say that happiness is the goal of our lives and the purpose of our lives, but it certainly doesn't lead us to believe, nor does life experience lead us to believe that it's always easy to be happy. And the reason it's not easy to be happy is because while the ground of ultimate reality and a discernment of the ground of ultimate reality and an alignment with the ground of ultimate reality would always lead to happiness because ultimate reality is only love. So Making it's... our way through the veils of illusion that are evidenced to us constantly by the body's senses uh, is not an easy task for anyone uh, uh, short of an enlightened master. You know, sometimes it is, like I said before, when everybody's being nice to you and everything's going well, not too hard. It's not trying to be happy, but it's just a big love as you're just trying to love everything around you. But that is happiness. That That's is the happiness. That's way okay. to be happy yeah. is, to, is to not only give a big love, but to be open to receiving that big love, which is another big piece of it. What's the future for you? Well, The Course in Miracles trains us and disciplines us mentally to focus on the present because if we take care of the present, the future will take care of itself. So the ego mind would have us live in the past and the future. The, the spirit within us focuses on the present. So that's how I try to live my life in terms of what I plan to do in the future, I know that, and uh, I'm sure you've heard, just as we all have heard about what's going on in Ireland and what happened with your abortion vote and so forth, I'm sure that you're very aware. In fact, I know you're very aware because we've read about this too, uh, very aware that we're going through a bit of a crisis in my country at this time. You are indeed. You and are. I am one of the millions of Americans very dedicated and devoted to the cause of doing whatever we can uh, and absolutely intend to do to right the ship of our democracy and put our country back on track. Can I give you my theory? Yeah. I believe that a certain president was put there for a reason. And the reason that he was put there was for other people who would have never taken the arms up of politics to get involved. And those people that are getting involved now will change the world. And if well, he wasn't in, it probably would have never happened. I think that's, uh, I, I, I will uh, go along with everything except the, he was put there. I mean, 
yeah, there's a reason why the Holocaust happened. His name was Adolf Hitler. Yeah. So the fact that there was a reason for something doesn't mean it was a good reason. Uh, a Course in Miracles uh, says that it is not up to you what you learn. It is only up to you whether you learn through joy or through pain. And I think that that's what's happened to my country. There are many lessons we were not learning. And so this happened. And yeah. I agree with you. There are a lot yeah. of people awakened to the to the lessons now uh, that were not awakened before. So I, I hope that you will pray for us and wish us well because we can use all the good energy sent our way as we go through this as possible. But you know, and the American people are very... Uh, decent people. We're people just like everyone else on the earth. A nation is just a group of people, just mm -hmm. like, you know, just like individuals, because we are just a group of individuals and we have our lower sides and our higher sides, just like the Irish or the French or the Chinese or anybody else. We, we all um, have it. I think what has happened in the United States, however, is that some of the lowest energies within us have been harnessed for political purposes. And what we need to do now is harness our love and decency and high-minded values for political purposes. And that will put us back on track. Put it back. Looking at the past and looking at the course of miracles and looking at centuries past, people knew this, were taught this. How come we are still in a world of trying to educate people the Course in Miracles or this is, there's a divine or there's an energy and you can, you can create what you think and you can have the life that you want. How come we're still got that resistance thousands of years later on? Well, I actually see it almost the opposite. Given how much destructive force has been generated on the planet and continues to be generated on the planet, there's got to be a lot of love that we haven't imploded already. So you, you, we don't see the works of love with our physical eyes the way we see the works of fear. But let's not forget that people fall in love every moment. People yeah. forgive each other every moment. People have babies who they love every moment. There is a lot of love that has been shared and that is shared. It's just not manifest in the same way. So that's number one. And number two, the Course in Miracles says that the fear-based ego emerged in the psyche of humanity millions of years ago in time as we know it. In the Bible, it says that Adam fell asleep and nowhere does it say that he woke up. So you say that this kind of of enlightenment has been around for more than centuries, for millennia. But when you think about how long the fear-based ego has been around, it's longer than that. There's nothing in The Course in Miracles that says you need to believe that to study the Course or anything like that. The Course is, is not trying to get us to believe in it. It's not even trying to get us to believe in God. It's trying to get us to believe in each other, which is the experience of God. What made you pick up the book? Well, you know, the course does not claim to be for everyone, but if it's for you, you know it. Just like you were talking about finding uh, the law of divine compensation before this program started, it just sort of fell at your feet. That's how we find our spiritual path. It just, it's right in front of us. And Did you read A Course in Miracles and then kind of have a ha-ha moment and go, I need to write a book about this? Oh, gosh, no. No, 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 no. No, I... I first started reading The Course in Miracles 10 years uh, before I wrote A oh, Return to Love. Wow. Wow. That's, that's dedication. Well, you know, I don't know about dedication. It's, it's when you are dedicated or devoted to devoted the study to because you realize it makes all the difference in your life. Yes. For me, it's theology. I, that's what yeah. I love. I love the questioning. Mm -hmm. I would have many, yes. many a debate to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. We'll come to the end of the show and I ask all my guests three questions. And one of the questions would be, what's the best advice or business advice that you'd offer out to people? See your business as a conduit to which you and all those who work with you on it can pool your resources in service to something higher. To in service to something that makes the world a better place for someone. And the more that is your intention and your alignment, and the more you treat your colleagues and 
employees and anyone else associated with you people for you to practice that with in terms of your devotion to their higher good, then the more universal forces will line up behind you and push you towards success. Beautiful. What book would you recommend apart from The Course in Miracles and your own books? There is a book by Rilke, Letters to a Young Poet, that I have always found so enriching. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll and anything that by Yeats, as long as you're... Yes, Yeats is good. <laughs> and you know, his, uh, in the second coming in that line, yes, the uh, best lack all conviction and the worst are filled with passionate intensity. That very much describes some of American politics over the last few years. Good. What song would you like to play out with? Uh, Miracles by Jefferson Starship. Brilliant. And where can people find yourself or find your website? Where can they find that? Thank you. Marianne.com, M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E. And you're coming to Dublin soon as well? I am, and I'm very excited about it also. Uh, Wednesday, October 10th at 7.30 p.m. I will be speaking there. I'm looking forward to it. I hope so. Let's do it. Marianne Williamson, it's been a pleasure and an honour. I have to say, honestly, it's been an honor to have you on Break Two Brands. I wish you all the success in life and you will, you will, without you knowing, you will educate me from here on in. Well, it's a pleasure and an honor for me as well. Thank you so much. And with that, God bless and take care. God bless you. Bye.